Quigley Down Under on 4K Blu-ray. This is my first time watching this thing. So I've always wanted to see this movie, and I had a friend growing up that this was one of his favorite movies. And for whatever reason, I just never got around to it. But when I saw that there was going to be Shout Factory releasing it on a remastered 4K, I was like, now's my time. And so I was thinking of blind buying it. And what really pushed me over the edge, other than, you know, Tom Selleck's lovely mustache, uh, was that the music is by Basil Polidorus, who also did uh, Red Dawn, Starship Troopers, Conan, so many good soundtracks. So that just pushed me over the edge and I was like, I'm blind buying this. I'm so excited. All right, I'm going to do a quick overview of the technical aspects according to my eye, not... Uh, really science, but just what I noticed technically. And then after that, I'll do just a movie review full of spoilers with things I noticed, things I like, things that stood out to me. And I think I'll shave my mustache off at the end of this video, if you're interested in that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, as far as the 4K image itself goes, so it said it was remastered from the original 4K, or the original camera negative, and I watched it in Dolby Vision, on a professionally calibrated TV. And I noticed there was a light grain throughout the movie. Um, I didn't ever notice any... Now, I was really caught up in this movie because I'd never seen it before, but I didn't notice any uh, smearing of the grain or freezing of the grain. It just looked like it was naturally in motion, which means to my eyes that it looks like it was not tampered with, which is awesome. But I would expect that from Shout Factory. I didn't notice any dirt or scratches in the film print. It was incredibly clean. I also didn't notice any digital uh, compression or artifacts, even in the scenes, like the dark nighttime scenes. Um, <clears throat> this thing looked great throughout the entire runtime. Very impressive looking 4K. Uh, the DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 was robust and powerful, but I mean, it's not like incredibly directional, like not a lot of directionality, but it was really good. I really thought it was a powerful soundtrack. So I don't, I mean, obviously I always like Atmos or 5.1, but if 2.0 is the original sound of this, I'm just happy to have it uncompressed. So yeah, as a 4K restoration goes, I think it looks absolutely incredible. I don't know if it's like one of the absolute best I've seen, but it's definitely up there. And the, the black levels looked fantastic. I never saw any, any crushing or anything, any artifacts or anything. It just looked fantastic all the way through. The one thing I'd say about the 4K is that oftentimes it looks like they used optical effects for stars and the moon. I would say that just stands out more on the 4K, but it never never really messed with the disbelief of the scene. I actually love the opening credits where he's going through all of his gear. I love this. It's just like a time capsule into the past. I love looking at all, all the cool leather stuff. It's just like, oh, this guy's so manly. I also think the soundtrack in this part really sets the tone for the movie. It's like a light but adventure-y and like frontier-y soundtrack and I thought I thought that worked pretty good and this is like a almost a Indiana Jones homage where he traces his finger across the map over to Australia but I thought that was a great piece of simple exposition where it's like this is an American cowboy weapons type guy and it's like and he's going to Australia and it's like Got it. I am on board. Thank you for the minimal exposition. Come to do the mast and what the fog Irish convicts obviously can't. <laughs> I love this quote about well, Americans. You just do your job and stay out of trouble. <laughs> Listen to this. In our experience, Americans are uncouth misfits. <laughs> They've run out of their own barbed Uncouth country. misfits? Us? Where are we, Lieutenant? <laughs> and his comeback, boop, is awesome, but I can't just keep showing the whole thing or YouTube will get me. But, uh, man, look at that. Look at that man. Look at that manly man. I just want to stick my fingers in there. Would you get a load of that mustache? My goodness. Look at that thing. <laughs> that is so manly. I thought Alan Rickman in this movie was outstanding, as he is in every single role he's ever had. <laughs> Help! Help! Stay right! I love this line. That man knocks me out of my own house. <laughs> this comes right back out. Well, don't just stand there. <laughs> oh, he's so good in this. He's always good. It's a little bit of the Sheriff of Nottingham boop on this scene right here. This was a pretty good subverting of expectations part right here when everyone surrounds the building and he just tips over the table and he's like, yeah, 
I can kill all of you. And it's like, oh my gosh, I kind of believe he can, but I think he might die from this. And so he's just sitting there all relaxed. He's just like, yep, I got this. And then the guy uh, conks him on the head. So definitely subverted, subverted expectations because it's like, oh, we're going to have a big old gun battle. And it's like, nope, he gets knocked out. And oh my gosh, what a start to act two of this movie. <laughs> These guys just plopped out in the desert. It's like, I love this, but I have no idea how they're going to get out of it or what's going to happen. And I felt like this movie kept doing that. So even though it's like there's been so many Westerns before it, because this is from 1990, and, you know, we've seen a lot of action movies, there was still subversion of expectations and, like, this crazy act two beginning where it's like, I have no idea what they're going to do. But I'm so glad she went with them. One thing I loved about this movie is just how, like, rugged it is and how, like, resourceful Quigley is. Look at this sneaking little little knife out of his boots. Totally going to get this guy. I love that he's using the body as a support <laughs> for his extra long range shot here. Another thing I really like about this extra long range shot is the fact that he has the barrel is arched. It's like, so instead of pointing straight at it, it's, it's like this, right? Because when you're shooting it long, the, a rifle's not a laser gun. If you pointed it straight at it, the bullet would eventually drop, right? So you have to actually arc the bullet over there to hit it. And as somewhat of a shooter myself, I really appreciate this kind of detail in this movie. <laughs> Got you. Chemistry of these two is amazing. On a new job, it's quite common for things not to go well at first. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> That's so good. Don't worry, on a new job, it's normal for things to not go <laughs> quite well at first. <laughs> They're dropped in the middle of the desert. This movie has awesome humor, awesome acting, amazing scenery, costumes, everything. The music by Basil Polidorus. Um, I, this is going to be a new favorite movie for me. I, I, it's a little sad it took me so long to watch it. Just growing up hearing so many people talk about it, I just... I just never got my hands on it. And to see this movie in a pristine, restored 4K, I feel like it's like watching it for the first time on 35 millimeter in a theater. It is truly a beautiful transfer on here and must have been a beautiful uh, film print. And they must have shot it beautifully because it sure transfers well to 4K. I feel like I'm watching a, a projected film instead of a video. All right, it's hard to tell. Because uh, I'm recording this on my phone and this is a shiny TV with some light in the background. However, the blacks, the black levels in this movie are outstanding. And I really think uh, even though 4K reveals a little bit of the seams a little bit more, the makeup for their extreme sunburns uh, is really, really good. I love how um, just the roughness of this movie, like when people are getting punched or hit, like there's like blood. And anytime there's blood, I feel like it's a good amount of it and it's well distributed so i really i really like just the the roughness and grittiness of this movie all right so this is where we find out about the tragedy of crazy cora and you're just watching his face the whole time and he's kind of got a furrowed brow and looks you know concerned slash sad but once she's out of sight where she can't see his face anymore it's almost like the sheer emotion of her story uh it's like he can't be keep a stoic face anymore um, just right before the scene changes, watch his face, specifically his mouth. Um, but it's just like he was reacting to her story, right? Like try not to try not to react too much while she's telling it because he wanted to just let her tell the story. But when the scene changes, right before it goes black, watch his face. And I think this is an incredible bit of acting that once she's not looking at him, he he almost like lets out the emotion and how he feels about her horribly tragic story about her baby. But watch, watch his face here. See that right? Right when the scene changes, you just see his mouth open. Like he's just like, like, what a horrible story. And I just thought that was an amazing bit of uh, acting on Tom Selleck's part. All right, watching these two take care of each other and as they get more familiar and as their love grows, my goodness, I would say, like, I loved all the action and the creaky leather and the bullets and the killing and the blood and the music and the scenery. 
But I think the best part of this might be their relationship and just watching them grow closer together. And this scene, like, if I can admit to it, this scene, this is a very swoony scene right here. It really, it really got me. Just watching them get closer together. Look at this. Aww. Aww. Now they're going through quite a lot of hardships together, but just as they as they take care of each other, it's is really good to watch. Here's possibly one of the very best parts of the movie as uh, Marston fi <laughs> finds out that more of his men have been killed uh, going out after Quigley. Also, look, little baby Ben Mendelsohn. Okay, listen to what Alan Rickman says here. Where are the others? Dead. All dead. Quickly. He was everywhere. Fall them all. I don't believe this. Did you see him? All right, right here. Not again. <laughs> Not Where again? That's such an incompetent bad guy line. Oh, man. The losers I sent out after this ultra killer got killed. Who would have thought? <laughs> I thought it was so funny. This movie really had me laughing and smiling the whole time. And there's a lot of, like, really horrible, tragic, violent stuff in this movie um, against innocent people. But the the tone had an interesting balance. So overall, I mean, I think it definitely earns the PG-13 rating, and it is quite violent. Um, but just lines like this make this movie so enjoyable to watch. It was also refreshing watching this movie to see uh, strong male characters and strong female characters in in the traditional sense of like a very masculine man in Tom Selleck and a female, a very feminine female here. But because she's feminine, that doesn't mean she's weak or it doesn't mean she's not independent. She's fiercely independent and incredibly strong. Uh, later, she's going to be shooting guns at a bunch of dingoes to protect a baby. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of one of the other most amazing female characters in movies, which is Ripley in Aliens specifically, where she's protecting the baby while she also has like a machine gun. And so it's like super maternal, but super strong. And I think a lot of movies nowadays are like, ooh, let's make a strong female character. And it's just like a dude. It's just a James Bond copied onto a, a female. And it's it's just such a, it's such a turnoff. Not a turnoff like, I don't mean like sensually, but I mean like intellectually, it's a turnoff. And so it's so cool to see people like Ellen Ripley in Aliens and like Cora in this movie uh, still have like a maternal instinct, but also still be fiercely independent and able to do violence. And so I think this movie does that so well. And movies nowadays feels like they just try to compensate like so hard one way or the other. And they just em emasculate the men and make the women into, like I said, a copy and paste of James Bond, which is just intellectually deadening. It just, it just kills it. There's nothing interesting with her. She has so such a depth to her character and same with Ellen Ripley. Um, with, you know, g going into aliens a little bit here, um, where she's got her daughter that she basically, Ellen cryo slept through her whole life. And then she meets this new young girl and takes care of her. Whereas this lady had her baby and then she get, meets this new little native baby and takes care of it. Him or her, I, I can't remember what it is, but anyway, I just, I love this movie for the, for the manly man and the, I guess, womanly woman. Strong, strong men and strong women in this movie. Loved it. And here we go. Music and here's just another example of uh, Quigley being so manly. Um, that's one thing I loved about this movie is just like the, sh the hardships that he will go through to take care of, um, I going to say his wife, his wife and kid, but it, to Cora and the baby, just that he's riding two days by himself with no water to in order to get help for them uh this movie i was telling my wife it made me want to be a better man a better husband a better father a better provider presider and protector so um you know of course it's an awesome entertaining a little bit campy 90s movie but i love to try and get stuff out of movies or apply movies to my life and uh this movie was very motivating almost makes me not want to shave off the mustache but it does get stuck in my food <laughs> Look at this glorious Tom Selleck Everyone hair. Knows about My goodness. You. 
<laughs> That's incredible. All right, here is my favorite shot in the whole movie. Now, there was so many shots that could be my favorite shot, so many wide scenery shots. But when I saw this one, I knew this was my favorite shot. So it's a backwards tracking shot while Quigley's reloading, walking down this alleyway. Right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, the Basil Polidorus movie music, you could almost hear the Klendathu drop from Starship Troopers in this music right here. So it's kind of cool to see the evolution of composers and hear where they've taken them inspiration from themselves to make later movies. There was a, definitely some Klendathu drop in this scene right here, if you know what I mean. The writing in this movie is actually pretty incredible too. Like all the different char character arcs, all the little seeds of... of uh, events they all get closed off like you got Cora where she's she's covering the mouth of the baby when the dingoes are coming and then she she remembers and she's like oh nope we're not gonna do that we're gonna make noise and she shoots shoots the Comanche dingoes and and then you have the part where she talked about her husband when he just dropped her off on the boat and sent her to Australia um and he never turned around and then you have this scene right here oh my goodness this is this was a very swoony part also I'm not gonna lie <laughs> oh, that was an ugly noise. Oh, man. That's... I hear you. I feel it too, Cora. All right, now I know I said this 4K looks great, but I don't even know if it'll phone will pick us up. But right here in these plants, you can actually see spider webs, like long stringing spider webs blowing in the wind on this scene. Oh, my goodness. The detail. Yeah, it's not going to pick it up, but you can see that. <laughs> wow. All right. Now, I know I was talking about that swoony scene just a second ago with uh, Tom Selleck turning around like the other guy didn't and uh, really showing that their relationship is getting closer, but almost as heartwarming as that scene is this scene right here with two dudes getting shot with the same bullet. Kelly, why the hell didn't you stuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now in slow motion. Okay, I knew when I saw this part that I was gonna have to watch it again in slow motion. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, so this is where it hits, hits this guy and then it's gonna hit this guy somewhere right there. So, ready, slow motion, bullet hit. Oh, there it is. Is that an optical effect or is it a squib? <laughs> so cool. Look at that young director, Krennic. Okay, so. It's famously known that Tom Selleck was considered, was up in the running to be Indiana Jones, right? And it was so cool to see a straight up Raiders of the Lost Ark homage right here. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know which one's faster. This one looks pretty quick. Between Raiders and this movie, which one uh, has a going quicker right because the truck obviously is not going full speed in Raiders let's not be kidding here however it was very cool to see Tom Selleck doing the Indiana Jones move of getting dragged in the dirt and and again we get to see uh Marty McFly playing Clint Eastwood in Back to the Future 3 do the same thing but it was cool to see a guy who might have been Indiana Jones doing an Indiana Jones maneuver so kind of a cool move in this movie and you've got the bad guy playing with his his uh victim like a cat playing with a mouse, and uh, ultimately, I think his, this guy's hubris is going to get him. Now, I love the end of this movie, how the, the whole time he's been talking about how he's he's never had much use for a pistol, not that he doesn't know how to use one, and this, this guy's fatal mistake. Classic standoff. Haha, <laughs> got all three! This is the best, as Alan Rickman's dying. <laughs> what Quigley says to him and watch his face after Quigley says it he said I never had much use for one never said I didn't know how to use him he smiles and then he dies all right beautiful man beautiful movie beautiful mustache uh, I loved this thing this is gonna be a new favorite and this 4k is an absolute good-looking filmic 
4K restoration. I was very impressed with it. Um, the special features were also really good. I liked the interview with the lady that played Korra the best, and then also the armorer. Um, awesome special features, awesome disc. I highly recommend it. Can't believe it took me so long to see it. Uh, should we go shave off my mustache now? All right, shed a tear for the mustache, but it's time. Kids love it, wife's sick of it, and it's getting stuck in my food. Plus it's time for a change, so here we go. Subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Right. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and uh <laughs> see you on the next one. Bye.